Hey, hey, what's up? We're back. Uh, been a crazy week. We're trying to keep pushing forward on trying to finish this little car and uh, hopefully we can get it done by the end of the week. So let's jump right into it. Hey, like I said, we're back. First, I want to say thanks for joining me again for another episode here in the garage. It's a little dark here because I'm utilizing the power sources, stretching cords of what I can in the garage. Um, it's a little bit hectic, disorganized, but as we work with these machines a bit more and more and more, I kind of figure out where everything is at and then hopefully get us a little bit better stake to get organized. So it's a little loud because I got the, um, the laser running. So you know what that means. We're cutting some pieces out of cardboard today. So, um, so from the last video that you saw, we saw they've got the front shower done, front shock tower done. If you, did, if you don't know, that video was span over a couple of days for the simple fact that I've been sick all week. Ever since Chili Bowl, I've been sick. Um, came back sick and unfortunately then everybody got it in the house. So we're trying to do our best to get through it. Everybody's good. We're getting better. Um, just a couple of sniffles and still a little bit of a <clears throat> weird town throat, but my voice is coming back, unfortunately for my wife, but it's all good. So yeah, so I went ahead and jumped up a little bit ahead. We went ahead and started on the chassis. Uh, that's the next critical part. So like that, it kind of tells us what we're going to have to do. So before we can do a rear shark tower, we're gonna go ahead and get everything mounted and uh, um, go from there. So right, see so what we're see at. We have the, the sprint car scattered out in pieces. Uh, as you can see, this is our front end. Here's, if you don't remember what we did, shark towers mounted, um, ready to go. So here's the rear arms and the rear transmission with the shock tower. So we pretty much repeated the process. We've got the chassis here. Um, this is obviously looking at it from the top side. So we did the same process. As you can see, we chased, we traced out only the back half and the front half because everything in the house doesn't really matter. Um, so we went ahead, uh, traced it out, put it back on the computer. I don't want to repeat showing you again what I did because it's just repetitive and then start getting bored. So we did go ahead, cut out our cardboard pieces. Um, we went in ahead, uh, I went ahead and mocked it up on the bottom just to see how it fits. Made some adjustments to it. Did the same thing for the back. Um, some of the holes are still kind of off, but I kind of redid the square and then I went back and then I got the chassis and with the holes that we have, I pretty much made adjustments with my, made measurements from my caliper from here to here, from hole to hole, here to here. Same thing goes in the front and then just put it on the computer. So I'll show you what we got. We went ahead, put it in the computer. We went ahead, put three millimeter holes, circles on every single one of the holes. So like that, whenever we cut it out the laser, we can just overlay it on the chassis and make sure we're aligned. So I pretty much cleaned it up, made everything narrow, and then we went ahead and cut the two inches out from the chassis, and this is what we came up with. All right, so as you can see, here's the chassis. Um, I took the offset out of it, per se. There might be some a little bit in it, but we just pretty much just squared it up. Uh, we redid the bottom. Now, obviously, right now, everything is just a square. I'll come back in and do the round edges and stuff, but it being a three millimeter bit, when it comes to those corners, it naturally does it on its own. So we're not really too worried about that. All right, so we'll go jump onto the other computer for it runs our laser and we pretty much already had it in the system. We went ahead and made a cut. This is what we All got. right, so this is what we got. Let me put this on the piece of paper so we can see it better. Bear with me here. All right, so you can see here is our chassis. Um, as you can see, it has three millimeter holes now. So I thought when I overlay it on the uh, car, we can see where we're at. Now, I already made some marks here. So everything up here matches up good. I'm just off on the back two holes. So I need to go up. And the way I describe it, I'm kind of knowing the computer now, I'm gonna go up X amount of clicks. Uh, same thing up here. Now. One of the biggest things that we're concerned about is just making sure this fits the chassis right. Go ahead and bring this over. 
Here we go. Right. So here we go. So we put that in there. And we will just make sure we get a good clean uh, contour right there in the front of the edge. And then uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and cut it in plastic. And then we're going to hard mount it and then go from there to see what we need to do. All right. So obviously, once we get everything lined up and once the holes are lined up and it's, everything is mounted secure, that's when we start adding our own little touches to it because we don't want anybody saying, hey, you're pretty much copying my chassis. No, I'm not. I'm just copying the factory holes that are coming off the chassis. And then from there, we'll go ahead and go through Silky's files and whatever kind of artwork he had and maybe the artwork that we had on our previous chassis. Uh, the the late model and the Midwest model that we just cut, we'll probably incorporate that in a little bit. Now, like I said, we're on a budget build here. What I and it being such a short piece of uh, carbon fiber, um, we're probably going to use what we have in scraps. Now, I have three millimeter, which is kind of thick, but with all the slots and stuff that we're cutting it, maybe it'll give it a little bit of flex. Um, uh, but we might have some old chassis laying around that we can probably cut and just go from there i mean i don't care it's, it's a functioning car once we know that it works we'll go ahead and commit to ordering some more carbon because unfortunately i have more three millimeter than 2.5 so we're gonna go home with three millimeter and if i find some scrap 2.5 that's big enough to fit the chassis uh we'll use it but my deal is i want the car to match with all the same type of carbon fiber and what i really want to do is go with the matte black so twill or whatever you want to call it so let's go ahead and make some changes Go back on computer, make another cut on cardboard, and then we'll All go right. So this is kind of cool to see here. As you can see, we're pretty much on where we need to be. Um, so we already made changes in the computer according to the notes that we have on here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and use this template that we have mark where our cage goes so we can go ahead and create where we need to be and like that we'll utilize every single bit of the cardboard that we are using you can see we have our marks and then we have um chassis traced out we'll use the calipers and go from there all right guys so <clears throat> we made the adjustments that we needed uh, now um, it's getting a little bit later in the evening now. I'm pretty much all day on this back and forth, plus responsible with the kids and the family and want to go spend time with baby girl. But because temperatures get a little cooler and obviously we have to open the door a little bit because we have to vent this fumes out. I mean, can't be breathing this stuff. So <clears throat> got my sweater on, so excuse that. So we made all the adjustments. We went ahead and cut a couple of pieces. Uh, let me show you here. So I got about three pieces here that I've cut and I've all had to make adjustments. If you can see, they go from one adjustment to the other and then you'll see the final product here in a minute. Now, um, um, I went ahead and got everything measured up. Uh, everything seems to fit right, so let right, me show you. There we go. So as you can see, the front deals here for are not an extreme. I mismeasured, <clears throat> simple fact, because when I'm, I was trying to get the cage as close as I can to the shock tower, but this was leaning forward. So obviously I was able to go for it more. So we got it where we needed. Uh, even got the servo uh, mounts made. I even squeezed them in to make sure it's fit nice and tight and everything fits perfect in the back. So what I've also went ahead and did is go ahead, got some acrylic so we can go ahead, permanent hard mount this and see where we're at. All right, so here we go. So we got it mounted up permanent. I mean, like we got it hard mounted. Everything matched up good. Um, we, we don't have any countersinks and stuff in there right now, obviously, but it's it's there. Everything matches up. There's a whole, there's a screws in almost every single thing uh, just for the fact that you choke you together. Now, the problem that we have now is this right here. So if you can see that the shock tower is getting in the way, so we're going to have to uh, come up with something there so we can fit it all the way. Now, 
there might be an instance where we have to change these holes because depending on the shot tower now if I, if I have to change the shot tower I can or if I just, it's easier for me just to move these holes it'll be fine it's, it's no problem we got all this room right here to mess have to move the cage where we want it but I really want it <clears throat> as close as tucked <clears throat> to the cage but there it is I mean pretty cool alright so as you can see we still have a little bit to go um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the video for today we're trying to make them not not so long but obviously I talk a lot so but uh, yeah it's coming out to be pretty good um, we're gonna go ahead um, in this video now on the next episode we're gonna go ahead finish the rear shot tower front bumper and then see what we're gonna do to mount up the rear part of the cage so let me know what y'all think uh, I'm pretty excited about it uh, the good thing about it too is that this should take very little bit of material to be able to convert a car so if you have a sprint car that has been convert has an x-ray that's been converted to a sprint car pretty cheap to transfer over now if you have a street stock or just a regular buggy without anything else um, you would have would have to get some standoffs and all that stuff but um, I could take all the measurements here and then put it all together so let me know what y'all think about the build um, see if y'all like to see anything different whatever but for right now we're going to go ahead uh, end the set wrap, wrap it up once again thank y'all for watching uh, with going through this with me uh, I'm having a great time I love doing this stuff so can't wait to try it out so thanks again and we'll see y'all on the next one peace